Okay, good to go. Um, always uh, great to get started. Uh, a lot of work put in, really, year-round. But um, finished up a, a training camp and now headed toward an opponent. Um, so it's an exciting time uh, getting getting there. Uh, got a bunch of respect for this opponent, uh, San Jose State, Brent Brennan, that staff, uh, what they've been able to build and compete at a high level for a year in and year out. I uh, was impressed watching them against USC. And uh, they got some players. The quarterback is dangerous. It can make a lot of things happen. Good, good pass for the football, but also his ability to extend and, and do that. Um, so definitely a stiff, stiff challenge to start. Um, I think I haven't talked to you since we've announced our captains. We're really proud of the, the group of guys that were voted by the team to represent us that way with Tali and Joshua Gray and Hodge, Levengood, Katan Aldapo. Um, I, it was another impressive, in my mind, year. A lot of guys on the team got votes. There was a lot of guys in double-digit votes that were close to it, but those guys did separate, um, and we're going to need their leadership as we go through this 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 season. Looking forward to it. Uh, so we're into game week, and, and we're preparing uh, just a day late just because we're we're playing on a Sunday, and so we're uh, into, into the rhythm and preparation starting uh, with a normal kind of a Tuesday practice tomorrow. Questions? Uh, I guess my start. Why, why DJ? Yep. Um, you know, his body of work throughout, he just continued to get better and better. I do think there was a separation. We had two big scrimmages, and he played the best in those two. Um, I do think we've got other guys in that room that uh, can compete and help us win games. Um, but I think the separator for, for our, in our minds was really those, those two scrimmages. And then what do you do for the backup? Is it that, is it that close? They're right together, or, or are there decisions yep. to be made? Uh, yes, decision to be made because it is close, um, and we feel like we're going to take this week of work uh, and kind of make that call uh, closer to game time. Uh, obviously, you know, Ben, proven commodity, can, knows how to win games, um, and then Aiden's got some real real talent, and he's continued to impress. So we're going to let those guys get some reps for the week and, and make a call. How is your confidence? Is it is it raised at all in terms of being able to make plays down the field without having played in the game yet? Yeah, we put a lot of work into it. Um, yeah, uh, I'm anticipating us to be able to to do some of that, but you find out when it's for real come game time, um, and so we'll we'll see what it looks like on on Sunday. We're going to need to do that. I think uh, just looking at the season in general, but start with San Jose, we're going to need to be, able to be explosive, score enough, playing a really talented quarterback. So um, it's vitally important. Coach, what sort of advantage do you think you guys have going to this week? Obviously getting a chance to watch San Jose State last week against USC. What did you see from them that you really thought that potentially you guys may be able to, may be able to game plan for them? And how do you guys feel heading into week one? Yeah, I think there are – there's some advantages of being able to see their their first game on tape. I think there's some disadvantages of them, you know, getting their first game and the kinks and the mechanics that come with that, uh, working through that. And so usually you make a huge jump in improvement from week one to week two. And so for us, we're headed into week one. They're going into the week two. I think being able to see them on tape, compete at a high level against a really good football team. Um, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with those guys for a long time. A couple of plays separated the game. Um, but it – they had our attention, but it raised our urgency recognizing how, how good a football team this is. Coach, what do you remember about the 21, 2021 performance that Cordero had against you guys? And also, uh, how do you think he handled that USC defense? Yeah, uh, remember in 21, him making plays, extending it, throwing it well. Um, and he's just built on all the experience he's had. He's turned into a you know good decision maker with the ball. Uh, and again, he, he's tough to defend because of his athleticism. Um, and so he's got uh, a lot to him as a quarterback. At that uh, other inside linebacker spot, Hart uh, grabbed that spot. What did you see from him in camp that, that made that decision? Yep, that was competitive too. Um, you know, his physicality, his continued grasp of the defense. Um, he got a lot of opportunities with that. You're going to see more than just Easton and Calvin out there. But to start the game, he, he earned that. And you, the, the losses on defense, where do you see the leadership at at this point in the season? Has that emerged, or is that still you know, something that you're looking for? Uh, well, you know, it, it's emerged. I mean, Katan back there has played a lot of football. Achilles played a lot of football on the, on the back end. We definitely um, uh, lost some production and leadership on the defense and offensive side, but defense in particular. 
and so now time will tell as this season goes, but with Catan and Achille kind of heading it up in the back end. How do, you, how do you feel about the differences opening on the road in your first game as opposed to a home game? What's, what, I mean, other than dry, you know, flying down, flying. There, what, what are the, is there any? Yeah, I mean, it's ideal in my mind to play in Research Stadium. So anytime I get an option to, to do it. But, you know, if you're going to be a good football team, you've got to find ways to, to win on the road. I think there's learning experience for a non-conference game because you get into conference, we're going to play half our games on the road. So all that's positive. Um, it's good because we do. We got a, a plenty of new player that hasn't done a ton with us on the road that will experience that and stand locked in and it creates some adversity early in the season to learn from. There are a lot of um, ex Beavers on the on the coaching staff. Have you worked with them in the past? I mean, because they've been a while since they've been here. Right. I mean. um, not ex Beavers. I I haven't. You know, I know a lot of these guys. Josh was here when we arrived. Um, Six years ago, Oglesby, the, the old line coach, and he got an opportunity pretty quickly, but worked for him, worked with him for a short amount of time. Um, so, but no Lyle, no Brent, obviously pretty well, and, and, and those guys probably the best out of the crew. What is the, is there any timeline at all on, on, on Schuster eligibility? No, yeah, we're not anticipating him uh, unless something comes out of thin air. We're not anticipating him this year. So, the, okay, so, yeah, that's what. Um, Anyone out that that, you, we, that right. has been ob that isn't obvious? I thought that question would come. I'm and I'm, honestly, no. Everyone listed on this depth chart currently um, is we anticipate good to go. I think the closest one, maybe not, is Everett Hayes, uh, but we'll kind of see how he feels at the end of the week. Outside of that, I think I think we're good. Coach, I'm just wondering, how much are you looking forward to opening up in Research Stadium? I know you guys have one more week before that, but how much are you looking forward to getting back at home in that new west side and just seeing the fans crowd the stadium and open up the 2023 season for yeah. Oregon State? A lot of build up to, to get into that point. Obviously, our focus is on the task at hand and what we got right in front of us. It's hard not to, for me, I mean, every day in my office, I can look right out at it and and we'll definitely be excited to when that takes place. I know it's been a long fall camp for you guys, and you've talked about a lot of players over the last couple of weeks that have really stood out. Is there one player, though, one particular player that you've really seen take that next step, that next level, whether it was a starter on the team or a backup that may be getting more reps this season that you really think kind of showed themselves this fall camp that really caught your eye in the last couple of weeks? You know, it's tough to just say one. Um, Kind of each side of the ball. I think Tanner Miller has elevated his game uh, in a big way. Flexibility guard and center through camp. He built off his, you know, he got some playing time late in the year last year. He he, he continues to to be big time for us. Um, you know, and I think Easton's primed and ready to have a big year. The guy uh, had some limitations during camp health-wise, but he, you could feel it when he wasn't there. Um, and so those two guys kind of jumped to my mind having big time camps. And to follow up on that question, was there any freshman other than Aiden probably that uh, you toy with? I know you got four games to play with mm -hmm. when it comes to whether you redshirt someone, but did any freshman stick out as to quote unquote be a guy? Uh, I thought Zach Card stood out for for a freshman. Uh, made uh, multiple plays throughout camp that has earned maybe some opportunities to to get out there and go. Uh, Thomas Collins has earned some opportunities. We'll rotate at the defensive line anyways, but as a freshman, he's earned some opportunities there, those two guys. And in the situation of having a game early like this where you could watch a team, your opponent, um, do you watch the game or do you wait until you're with your, your staff and breaking it down? No, I definitely watched it. Uh, sat up in my office and watched the whole whole thing. And so you're, you know, that'll be your first shot. You definitely study it after, but I watched it. Last week, we, you got a look at the, the new uh, clock rule in practice. Uh, what, are we, what are your impressions after the opening weekend? Yeah, um, not, nothing dramatic. I mean, I, I think the stats are saying it's a couple plays down and all that. Nothing dramatic. I think you, you do just got to pay attention to when second quarter, fourth quarter, when we're getting close to that two-minute mark, how, how that will change things. Coach, it's, I think it's kind of a big deal when a player decides, well, I'm on offense, I'm going to defense now, and vice versa. Makaya Tung, Riley Sharp, how's that working out? I think both guys are feeling confident with, with that move. Uh, they're going to play in those other positions. And, you know, Riley's 
learned it really well. Uh, shows a little more athleticism, I think, than just rushing the passer in so he can catch it. He's been physical at the line of scrimmage. I think Micaiah um, is an athlete at the inside linebacker, um, can run sideline to sideline. So I think both those moves have been positive. Coach, over the summer you talked about wanting to be more balanced this season. You've had a couple weeks of fall camp. Do you feel like you guys are ready to achieve that goal right now? I know you also said it depends on the game situation of one, if passing's working or running's more, working more, you'll go that route. But do you feel like you've seen what you wanted to see this fall camp to become a more balanced team than just more a run first team? I think we saw what we wanted in regards to an emphasis of you know being good at both throwing it or running it. Um, now it's putting it together in, against someone else and in a game situation. There's no question we get into a game and one thing's working way better than the other. We're going to can try to do that. But um, over the season, we want to have some balance on it. And I think we're heading in that direction. It looks like uh, Ivy won the job. One of the, one of the corners, was that clear cut? Or did, was it a real battle down in the end? Uh, it, not, it was a battle because multiple guys got opportunities to do it. And we'll play multiple guys um, back there. But he was pretty consistent um, uh, playing corner, tackling, understanding the scheme, challenging receivers. Um, and so he gets the first crack at it. Um, I was curious about one thing on the depth chart. Maybe it's just semantics, but you've in the past have listed two outside linebackers. There's only one listed this time, and then, then you got Chatfield at a defensive end. Is there? I mean, is that just a, the way you're listing them now, or is there a little bit of a change? To um, kind of way, the way we're listing them. You're going to see a lot of those guys. A couple of those guys, you put them at one spot. They actually play two spots, and so it's kind of semantics. I mean, in in your mind, as a defensive end. A lot like an outside linebacker. Very similar, yep, and what they're asked to do. And then, again, depending on what defensive group we got out there, he might be called a defensive end, then he's called an outside backer. If we're in nickel or if we're in base, it's it's kind of semantics. You, you mentioned Everett Hayes, but did Sappington win the job or, or? He did win the job, and some of that was because Everett's availability just went less and less. Atticus had a great camp. Scrimmages was really accurate with it. Kickoffs, accurate and deep. So um, starting game one, he's, he's up. How much? How much? Uh, you, you, a lot of receivers you got listed on, as the backups. How? How is that going to sort itself out over the week? Do you right. feel like there's a couple of them that are starting to separate themselves as, as that four, five, six guy? Um, they're they're going to be in different plays, different roles. Um, so I can see all those guys playing, and then depending kind of on what plays get called and how the game's going, how many. You know, how much are we going to play with two tight ends versus one versus none? So it's going to be kind of a mix um, with that. But we do feel good. Noga going into the game, Ray Haw, Trent, Card, we already mentioned a little bit. Jimmy had some big plays. I can see all of them getting in. Coach, as you talk about what plays you call, I wonder when you look back about Jack Coletto and the versatility he offered and just going into a year without that guy. I yep. mean, it, that you used him so creatively as – is there any chance down the road, though, does that develop organically or what, to find another guy who can give you that kind of versatility? Yeah, not not against finding another guy. He's just tough to recreate, I mean, with his skill set and all of that. So you got to do things just a little bit differently, a little bit more maybe traditional. Um, but he you can't replace him one for one. It was like three for one. And from the special teams end, defensive end, obviously offensively with all of that. So it'll look a little different this year. Coach, what do you think are going to be some of your biggest challenges this season? Obviously, going into any new year, you get some positives that come with it, but also mm -hmm. some some issues along the way. What do you think that you've seen over these last couple of weeks that you feel like you guys need to make sure you get addressed before you head into your week one matchup against San Jose State? Yeah, I mean, it's tough to always anticipate anything that can go wrong. I just know in general there's going to be some adversity Throughout the season, there's going to be some adversity within a game. Um, I think that was one of the strengths of last year's team, of how they battled back and responded from some adversity. And so uh, looking for this team to, to have the same approach, that it's not going to go perfect and how we reload. And if there's adversity if you can get up in a game. We talked about it as a team, too. We're not just talking about if you're down. Well, if you're up, are you going to start to get casual and all that, looking at – you know, we lost some good players last year, but the maturity of those players that we lost. And so replacing that, other guys stepping up. Excited to see how this group does it. Um, but handling adversity throughout a season is big. Thanks.